Hey you guys, time once again for another book review of the latest horror book that I've read. So this novel right here, it's actually the debut novel of an Irish writer named A.M. Shine. I believe he'd written some short stories prior to this, but this is his first full length one. And it's fairly recent. It came out in October, 2021 and it's called The Watchers. This was another one that came up in my Kindle Unlimited recommendations because, you know, if you read enough of the stuff, like check out enough of the books, then they'll give you recommendations that are kind of similar. And this is one that came up and the, uh, you know, synopsis actually sounded really interesting. So I ended up reading it. Now I will say that this is more, uh, this is definitely a horror novel. It's a little bit it's kind of based in Irish folklore a little bit, um, and it's kind of like a monster type, monster in the woods type of story. And it's really detailed, really descriptive, very atmospheric. Uh, it's more creepy than scary, but I did really like uh, a lot of the folklore behind it, like the introduction of the monster, which is kind of based on a real, well, not a real monster, obviously, but like a real monster from folklore, but has kind of its own thing going on as far as I could determine. Um, but yeah, I, overall, I really, really enjoyed this. I think it would probably, oh, there's a couple like minor criticism that I give it, but I'll get into that uh, a little bit later. So the synopsis of this book is that there's kind of a prologue at the beginning where there's a married couple whose names are John and Ciara. And it's kind of like their Sunday and they decide just for shits and giggles, they're going to go out on kind of like an adventure. Like they're just going to go on a drive. They're not going anywhere particularly. And so they decide to set out and do that. Now this is in Galway in Ireland where the author is also from. So they kind of end up going this circuitous route. Uh, they don't really, I guess like the cell phone service craps out. They don't really end up knowing where they're going and they're just kind of j making jokes about, oh, maybe we're lost and stuff like that. And they're like, oh shit, <laughs> we are actually lost. And they don't actually uh, know where they are. And then once they get to a certain point, uh, the car dies, all the cell phones die, like pretty much all the electronics die. It's like a dead zone type of uh, situation. And uh, they end up having to go into the woods and bad shit ensues. So after this kind of opening, then we go to, I don't, she's like the main protagonist. Her name is Mina and she's, um, you know, the, the story goes back and forth between her and like three other characters, but she's sort of like the main protagonist. Like she's the person that we're most often seeing things like through her perspective. So Mina is uh, an artist and she's like single and seems happy to be so. Uh, a little bit of a drunk, she kind of smokes, but she seems again, like pretty happy with, she's not like bummed out or anything like that. And she likes to hang out in the pub and whatnot. Uh, but because she's an artist and money is kind of, she gets some, but it's like few and far between. So she's always kind of looking for like gigs, you know what I mean? So she knows this older guy who she's friends with at the pub. And this older guy is always kind of like, has all these little money making schemes, like, you know, 200 pounds here, 300 pounds there, whatever. So he says to her, oh, um, I have this friend who's like a bird collector, like an exotic bird collector up in Connemara, which I think is how you pronounce it. And uh, I have this really rare, like beautiful golden yellow parrot and I need you to drive up there and deliver it for me. And he's gonna pay, I can't remember how much it was, but he's gonna pay some amount for it. Um, and you can keep most of the money, just bring me some of the money back and you know it'll be good for both of us. So uh, it's very random. So she's going up to this place she's never been to before to essentially like deliver a parrot. The parrot never gets a name. She basically just calls him the yellow one. You know, he, he's, he almost comes becomes like a little bit of a character in himself, in himself like, you know what I mean? So she sets out uh, with, she has a GPS and the guy, you know, the, the drunk guy at the pub, he's like perpetually drunk, old dude. And uh, he gives her directions, but they're not all that great. Uh, so it will surprise no one to know that she basically ends up somewhere around the same area where the original couple ended up 
and the same thing happens. Like, her car breaks down, her cell phone won't work, and, like, her cell phone's dead. And she's like, well, fuck me. And she's kind of, and the fact that she's kind of, like, a loner, and she's kind of, like, happy to not really have, she has a sister, but the sister seems like kind of an asshole and is always, like, calling her to you know, shit on her life choices and stuff. So she doesn't really talk to her all that much. So she doesn't really have that many connections. So it's not like anybody's going to miss her or come looking for her or anything like that. So her car breaks down like right at the edge of this big creepy forest. And she looks all around. There's still kind of a road, but there's nobody else around, like nothing else around. So she's like, well, uh, obviously there's nothing back the way I came. So I'm going to like try going through this forest. Maybe there's a house or maybe there's another road or something like that. So she picks up the parrot and, uh, you know, a little bit of bottle of water that she has and trudges off into the forest. She's not in there too long before she starts hearing really horrible, like inhuman screaming, which of course alarms her quite a bit. So she just starts to run as you would. And then suddenly she sees like this kind of weird looking like older woman and she kind of pops out uh, of nowhere and she's just sort of like, hey, you need to come in here like right now, like immediately. And then she notices that there's like this weird, not necessarily like a house, but it's almost like a bunker, like this concrete bunker type uh, construction in the middle of the woods and has kind of like a light and a door and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, Mina's just kind of like, uh, okay, I don't really see any other options at this point. She's like, you know, come on, you're going to get fucking killed. So she ends up going into this bunker with this older, older woman who turns out to be named Madeline. So when she gets inside this bunker, she discovers that there are also two other people in there. There's like a 19 year old guy uh, named Daniel. And then there's also Ciara, who was the wife of the guy, John, that we saw in the beginning. Now, as it goes on, it turns out that John actually made it to the bunker also, like both of them did. But then he decided he, you know, a while back, he was like, I think it was three or four days ago, he was going to go try and get help or something like that. And he has not returned yet. So they're actually not sure if he's still alive, but they're presuming that he's probably not. So Mina gets there and it's this really, really weird situation. Like I said, it's kind of like a concrete bunker And then there's like another door and then it goes into this other room and this other room has this whole entire wall that's made of glass and it's just like this bright light like all the time. And she goes in there and it's like there's all these locks and shit like that. And Madeline was like, you know, when the light is on, we have to be in this room. Otherwise, the watchers will get us. Now, you never find out entirely and I think this is this is really the only criticism I had with the book is that you never find out exactly. I'm not saying you have to find out exactly because I know I always say like if you over explain your monster, then it's not scary anymore. But I think I would have liked a little bit more about the lore. Like I said, it could be that they're based on something that's really in Irish folklore and I'm just not as familiar with it. So it could be because he does kind of make um, a thing to them maybe being like fairies, not like, you know, Tinkerbell type fairies, but like actual fairies, which are like scary and mean. So it's kind of like that. But the way they're described, like you don't really get to see one until the end. You mostly just hear them and they have like these horrible shrieking sounds. And then you find out later that they can also kind of like mimic people. Like they can sort of like, not exactly because they're still kind of fucked up looking, but they can kind of like put on people's faces and stuff like this. They're supernatural creatures essentially. And they've apparently been in this wood in Galway for since whenever, since like before humans have even been around and you know, not really many people know about it. So there's kind of like these forests and it's like, if you get too close to it, like all electronics like fucking die and then you're just going to get like fucking eaten by them essentially. So this bunker, and I, like I said, I won't spoil like anything more about it too much, but this bunker, however it got there, uh, Madeline, the older woman who saved Mina from being eaten by the watchers by dragging her into the bunker, She says that she's been in this bunker more than two years. 
Now, you can actually go out into the woods in the daytime. Like, you can go around and forage and stuff, and they have been, because like I said, they've been there a long time. Daniel and Ciara, Matt, there's kind of like a weird dynamic between the three of them, like when Mina arrives. Madeline is very much like the boss, you know what I mean? She's, I want to say she's like a motherly figure, but she's a very, very stern disciplinarian. She's basically like, look, I'm trying to keep you dumbasses alive. Um, there are rules, you have to abide by them or you're going to get killed and it's like and i'm you know i'm going to try and keep you alive but if you do something dumb then i'm not going to be too sad if you get your stupid ass killed again and she's kind of always telling mina like these two are useless it's like they're so dumb and it's like they wouldn't do anything like if i didn't tell them and all this other kind of shit now, uh, you kind of find out more a little bit. Now, Ciara, the w the wife of John, she's still, uh, she seems like a lovely, like, really, really nice, sweet person. Uh, she's still holding out hope that her husband John is still alive out in the woods somewhere, but everybody else is pretty sure that the Watchers got him or he would have been back by now. But she also seems like a little bit, I don't want to say she seems like a little bit of an idiot, but she seems like kind of, she's very, like, naive or, like, childlike. And Daniel is, you know, kind of young and he's a little bit, I don't know, he seems like a little bit cowardly and he doesn't, he's kind of like upset with the whole dynamic with Madeline because he he ran away from uh, a, a really strict father who was always like berating him and saying he was never good enough and he was never going to amount to anything. So it almost seems like now he's trapped in this bunker with a woman who's essentially doing the same thing. So he's kind of like beaten down. But when Mina arrives uh, with the bird, the parrot, you know, it kind of changes up the dynamic a little bit because Mina you know, kind of immediate, she's an artist and she's pretty perceptive. And so she kind of immediately sees what the situation is. And she doesn't, she doesn't like take over from Madeline, but she's kind of like studying her, like trying to figure out what it is that, that kind of made her the boss and trying to figure out what her deal is because she's kind of like watching her being like, I know she's not being entirely truthful. Like she suspects that Madeline knows more about the watchers than she's letting on. But she, it takes her a while to like figure out what it is. So most of the first, I kind of like feel like the first two thirds of the book is very claustrophobic because it's set pretty much inside this bunker. Because like I said, once night falls and there's like a light that comes on like automatically, like in the bunker. Um, and Madeline doesn't really tell them why that is. She just says the light comes on as soon as it, you know, gets dark outside and the watchers start prowling around. And when that light is on, we have to be like in the lower part of the bunker, like with the glass walls. The glass wall is there because they're called watchers and they want to watch them. So it's almost kind of like he paints it as though the creatures like enjoy watching them like they're their pets like in a fish tank or something like that but if they get out then they will absolutely eat them so there's that going on too so uh so yeah so it's really like claustrophobic with just these four people and then so it's nighttime they have this fucking bright light on all the time so obviously they're not sleeping very well and they don't really have a lot of food they have to go and forage uh they've set some traps but at one point like the watchers like fuck them all up but they have to keep putting them like higher and higher up in the trees and basically all they can trap and eat are birds because no animals will hang out in this forest understandably so uh so daniel has had to go out and keep climbing higher and higher like to set the trap so the watchers can't find them and they also just eat like nuts and berries and stuff like that so they're all kind of like you know slowly sort of like starving to death none of them look all that good like i said they're not getting all that much sleep and there's that kind of shit too so that's pretty much a, uh, as much of the thing that i want to spoil because at some point like i said at two-thirds of it they're in the bunker and then they discover something else that makes them think that maybe they can escape because they've pretty much got to the point. I mean, Madeline has been there the longest, but they've pretty much got to the point. Well, we're never going to get out of here because you can't, because the woodland is so big that by the time, like, even if you started like super early in the morning, you wouldn't be able to be get out of the woods by the time night fell. And then the watchers would find you and get you. So they're, pretty screwed but about two-thirds in they do find something that like changes their situation somewhat and maybe gives them hope that they can get out so there is that too and then the end of it 
has kind of a twist. Now, some of the people, well, it is a twist. It's not kind of a twist. <laughs> it's an actual twist. Now, some people, like the reviews I read of this, like said they saw it coming. I absolutely did not. But in hindsight, like once the twist happened, I was like, oh, duh. Like I should have seen it coming, but I did it. <laughs> I guess maybe, maybe I wasn't paying as close of attention as I thought I was. But yeah, it, it did actually surprise me. I was like, that way. And then I was like, oh yeah, I, I probably should have figured that out. And <laughs> maybe I'm not all that smart but yeah uh so there is like a twist ending but like I said I don't want to spoil any more than that so this book is actually if you like Irish folklore you know like a I don't know like maybe a movie like The Hallow or something like that that's kind of like the vibe that this gave me um because that was kind of also about like the woods and there was these creatures in there that were kind of like changeling type situation um so if you like that movie too you would probably also really like this book as I said it's very very atmospheric it's very descriptive some reviewers called it like purple prose or it was very like verbose or it went too much into description it does shade in that direction but he does have like a really uh i really like his writing style but there were long passages where stuff were just like described and while it was beautiful um sometimes it did go on a little bit too long although it does like really paint a picture in your head you you will get a very clear picture of what this woodland looks like what the bunkers look like all that other kind of stuff. So I will give it that. It could have been maybe slightly shorter, but I'm, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I did see that some uh, some readers really thought it was too much and like couldn't get with it, but I didn't really find that. Um, like I said, it is very des descriptive and you could call it verbose, but it didn't really bother me all that much. Um, the only other minor criticism, I would have liked to know more about the background of the Watchers. Like they, there's some... I mean, I guess it's understandable that, you know, we're seeing things from mostly Mina's point of view who just came in here like, and she's like, what the fuck is going on? I was just taking a bird someplace and all of a sudden, and then the other three, like obviously Madeline's been there the longest, so she probably knows more shit. But like I said, I guess it's understandable if you're just like a person and these are like these ancient beings that have lived in these woods forever and like nobody knew about them. So nobody really knows all that much about them. And in some ways that does make it scarier. You do kind of get... There is a point like toward the two thirds mark where where the monster like one of the monsters is like described in fair enough detail. But as I said, it's not the folklore behind them is not real uh, is kind of not really, really gone into all that much. And I can't decide. I don't know, like the more I think about it, the more maybe that's not a criticism, because maybe if it was over explained, like if they had some. Like, I don't know, if they found some book somewhere that said, oh, here we are, this is exactly what they are, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that would have, like, demystified it a little bit because the monsters actually are really scary and, like, actually really threatening because, like, and they can... The thing about the bunker is that it's kind of like... The way I pictured it, it was, like, two rooms. There's, like, one room that's, you know, sort of like the front room that they call the living room, and it has, like, a fireplace in it. But that one has windows, but they don't have any screen or glass or anything like that. So if you don't get into, like, the the reinforced bunker part, like, with the all the locks on the door and, like, the other room and the glass wall, uh, then you're fucked because... If you're just stuck in the living room, then the watchers can just climb in the window and just eat you. You know, at one point when they do get in and they're trying to get like into the thing and it's like really scary and you can kind of see them like in shadow, like through the glass and shit like that. But you don't really get a good look at one of them until towards like the two thirds, like, you know, right where there was kind of like a change where they're trying to get away. So yeah, so overall, I actually really enjoyed this book quite a bit. Um, as I said, it's very atmospheric, it's very creepy, and I really like the Irish folklore aspect of it because it's a monster that you don't, the way that the monster is, it's kind of like one that you don't see very much. Like I said, that has like a changeling aspect to it, but it's also just kind of like a straight up straight up monster in a lot of ways so i thought that was really cool like a really original take and honestly it sucks you right in with you know you getting lost in the woodland and all of a sudden like some old lady is like hey come in this bunker you know what i mean it's like so it really like gets you into the story right away uh but yeah it's probably more like i said more creepy than scary and it did kind of remind me a little bit of that movie the hallow 
uh, which I think is on Netflix or something like that. I saw it like a while back. But uh, if you like that movie, you'd probably like this as well because it's the same kind of vibe to it. But uh, yeah, overall, very, very good book. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free on there. So if any of you have read it or want to read it, uh, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. And that will do it for this Tomes of Terror. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.